Welcome back to Success and Equity on BCTV. I'm your host, Francis Mayer, and today we're taking a look at the vocational arts, specifically welding. Um, Bakersfield is a town where we actually still make things. Now, uh, probably 70 or 80 percent of the people watching this have an iPhone in their pocket, and if you look on the back, it probably says, uh, designed in Cupertino, California, but it's not made in California. In fact, Apple doesn't produce any products in California, to my knowledge, but they do generate ideas. But here in Kern County, we still make things. We still pull oil out of the ground. We still provide green groceries to almost 80% of the nation. And welders and fabricators are a tremendous part of that. And it's what they call a gold-collar job. If you own your own welding truck, uh, you could find yourself in a very favorable position after a few years. And Jeremy Stott who once played in the NFL, decided he needed to make some money, so that's what he got into. And now he's passing that trade on to all kinds of BC students, including some that you wouldn't necessarily think would be able to participate in such a physically demanding and dangerous activity. But they are, and now they're using those skills to help other students. Take a look at the video that Belinda and I put together on that very subject. Sammy, Sammy, God bless him, he's got a heart of gold, you know, and he wants to do more than he can, but being, you know, wheelchair bound, he's kind of, um, pro, you know, prohibited to doing some things as far as like lifting things, you know, obviously because he's in the wheelchair, but, you know, the kid wasn't scared to get in there and, and try any, anything new. You, hey, Sammy, can you do this? Absolutely. He'd go in there and he, and he would do it. And so, you know, you kind of look past his ailment, if you will, or his disability, and you think, okay, this is, he's still a human being, he's still a student, he's still trying to learn, and, you know, he's got the motivation and the, and the will to try new things, you know, you just want to continue to give him more projects, and Sammy, I mean, God bless his heart, he did so many great things throughout the semester, he was actually my student aide, and I was surprised at some of the things that I didn't think he could do, but he actually did, and proved me wrong. I'm in the Bakersfield Welding Program here at BC. The reason why I got involved in welding is through, when I, when I was a kid, I, I watched a lot of people with disabilities, they couldn't get around. So in my head it clicked. Why don't I design ramps or fences, something so they can get around and get into, get into stores, make it easier to get around so it's not so difficult. So people can't say, you can't do this, you can't do that. No, they can do it because somebody did make it accessible for them. So they can go into that store or into that restaurant. When are you going to like a, let's say you go into a shopping mall. Well, you're trying to look for clothes. If the gap ain't big enough, you can't get your chair through. So you got to find different ways around. And if you can't get around, you got to find a manager. And sometimes you can't find that manager to open it up. So you can, and then you don't want to go to that store because you can't get around, so that store loses a customer. Our house, we have ramps that were put on, put in for the house, because our whole house is with steps, and we have ramps on the steps for me to get up. Those were made and put in by the people that, that did it for us. They put them in for us. And then we have a rail that's on the side of our house that my dad and my brothers built for me so I could pull myself up a hill, because where I live is all on a hill. So that rail actually helps me climb the hill. With what my disability is, like if I use my upper body, my legs and everything tighten up. And if I use my lower body, my chest from my, my arms to my chest, everything just gets really, kind of you get a Charlie horse. Uh, imagine that through your whole, like just everything wants to get real tight. Your muscles don't want to relax. Once again, you know, you, you, if you look at the guy for, his, for what his disability is, you would think that he wouldn't have any kind of skills, but once again, he proved me wrong. You know, he, one of his buddies uh, has a wheelchair, and when they ride the bus, I guess when they anchor him into the bus, they put a lot of pressure on the back of, the, of these wheelchairs, and what happened is the braces that held up the back of the, the uh, uh, chair had snapped. And so Sammy came in to me and asked, well, hey, can we fabricate a piece to fix this guy's uh, wheelchair? And I said, well, hey, you know, Sammy, I don't have time to do it, but if you want to do it, you're more than welcome to use any of the tools. Um, you know, and I just kind of gave him some pointers. Instead of using aluminum, why don't we just make it out of mild steel so it'll be a little bit stronger, so it's going to be a little bit heavier, but it'll be a lot stronger and it will never break. And he said, okay, I want to try that. I said, all right. 
And so, you know, we sat him down and we scribed out the piece that he wanted to cut. He used a plasma art cutter to cut it out. And then he ground it down and he actually, him and his father actually cut out a little bit of uh, the metal to make it just a little bit lighter. But when he was done with it, I mean, it was spot on, almost an identical match to the aluminum one that had broken. And I was just so amazed by, you know, not only his attention to detail, but his, 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 his diligence in getting the project done. You know, I was just amazed by him. Uh, his friend, I ran into, I was going down in the library doing homework for a class, and I ran into his friend, Debbie, and she told me, she asked me what I did, and I said, I'm, I'm a welding sitting here. And she said, do you think you can fix something for me? I said, maybe I'd have to take a look at it. And she said, it, I asked her what it was, and she said it was a, a bracket to hold the back, the backrest of a wheelchair up. And I said, let me take a look at it and I'll see what I could do. So I took a look at it. I talked to Jeremy and I said, Jeremy, is there any way I could spend my time working on this for my extra credit? And he said, yeah. So I worked on it as an extra credit for a friend to make sure that he's able to get around and he's not, so he's not in pain and he don't have to wait forever for them to say, okay, this part's coming in, but you gotta wait a couple months. Well, I'm here, I'm a, I'm a welding student. This is what I wanted to do. That's. For me, building something like that was my very first time, making a bracket like that for a wheelchair. It just, when you, when you call out for the parts, it just takes too long. Sometimes it can, you could be three or four months, five months before you can get one part. The wheelchairs take six months to six to eight months for them to build them and get them to you. It was really important to me because if it wasn't for that bracket that he made, it would have been hurting my back a lot and then I'll be having a lot of problems. It's pretty much his whole life. Without his chair, you can't go anywhere. Right. That's how I see it. Without a chair, if you're in a wheelchair and you don't have your wheels, it's like having your legs. If you don't have your legs to move, how can you go anywhere? You can't. You're stuck. That's what inspired me to actually become a welder. All the welding teachers up here are very patient with me. That's what, that's what you got to learn with somebody with a disability. you got to learn patience because sometimes we not, I might not be able to pick something up as fast as everybody else because I do have a learning disability at the same time. So trying to learn a new skill, it takes me a little bit longer to pick it up. That is a tremendously inspiring story. Sammy, he learned how to do something. And that something was really valuable. And then he had a friend who found himself in a jam. And because Sammy had the education, he could actually improve his friend's quality of life. That's the value of learning to do things. And by the way, I want to tip the cap to um, my associate producer, who's a student, uh, Belen. Um, she did a wonderful job uh, putting that together. She did the editing, uh, as we call it. And she also did a significant amount of the shooting on, on the project that you just watched. And what a lot of people don't realize is that that 10 or so minutes of video is often the product of 10 to 15 hours of work. Um, I know somewhere uh, along the road there's a quote about how uh, like the 10 hours of work goes into one hour of, of, of video. And actually, I think that the ratio is probably much steeper um, in favor of the work. But we're going to speak with a student writer. Uh, his name is uh, Nicholas Mice, and he has actually written a script. And we're also going to talk to Professor Jack Hernandez, who I see outside of the studio right now, uh, about a special festival that's coming to Bakersfield College very soon. It's going to feature uh, plays that were written and directed by folks that are among us, faculty and students. And, and I believe that Nicholas is going to share with us just how much work goes into uh, his 30-minute one-act play. I'm going to guess that there's a lot of uh, sweat and tears that went into that script, but we'll hear directly from Nicholas up next on Success and Equity on BCTV. TV. <laughs>